the new school year right around the corner, classrooms across America are facing a teacher shortage that has already left some schools scrambling. And Becky Pringle, president of the National Education Association, the country's largest teachers union, has described this shortage as a, quote, five alarm crisis. My goodness, Becky, welcome back to the program here. So you, you give us the numbers uh, that you all have. How bad is the teacher shortage this upcoming school year? TJ, it's good to be with you again. You know, this is that time of year back to school when educators, parents, students are excited and they're hopeful. This year, of course, as, go, as students go back to school, we are concerned about the teacher shortages and staff shortages throughout this country in rural and suburban and urban areas. And I will tell you that we know that if we don't have enough educators, then our students aren't going to have the one-on-one -on -one attention they need and deserve. Uh, are you able to, oh, forgive me here, Ropes, I'm sorry, but to your question, are you, are you able, though, to, is there a way for you to gauge how bad it is this year compared to previous years? We know that this has been a chronic problem. This is not new. We have been sounding the alarm for almost a decade and a half that we have a crisis in the number of students who are going into the teaching profession and the number of teachers who are leaving it. But of course, with, as with everything else, the pandemic just made it worse. And, and Becky, uh, we actually have some numbers here. 55% of educators are saying that they are thinking about leaving the profession earlier than they anticipated. That's up from 37% last year, nearly double what was reported in 2020. You mentioned the pandemic as, as perhaps why this is happening, but how do you combat that? This is what they need to come into the profession and stay in the profession. They need professional respect. For them, that, that was three things. Professional, uh, the professional authority to make teaching and learning decisions for their students, professional rights to have the conditions and resources to do the jobs they love, and professional pay that reflects the importance of the work they do. Uh, Becky, on the, for, the, for the parents who are listening about to, take, to send their kids back to school uh, here very soon, what, what does their child's education, their day, their classroom look like with this type of teacher shortage that you describe? Are we just talking about more kids are going to be uh, in one class and only have one teacher tending to more? What, besides that, what does it look like? The concerns that our educators and parents have raised, uh, which are playing out, played out last year and, and could play out again this year, is that we had to double up classes. We had to not necessarily offer the special education services that our special education students need. We knew that there were too many educators who were overwhelmed by the number of students that they were trying to meet the individual needs of. And we don't have enough substitutes. So we found that many of our educators were coming into school sick and they weren't taking care of themselves. We know that the well-being of, of, our, of our teachers and our educators absolutely impacts the well-being of our students. So this is a, a huge problem, but we are working to use the funding from the American Rescue Plan to actually bring the resources that we need into schools to make those long-term solutions work right now. Yeah, and speaking of, of a shortage of resources, uh, obviously so many people are in financial distress during these economic times and uh, the average back to school shopping for parents sets most families back $864. That is a significant burden for so many families. Is there anything that can be done to ease that burden? We encourage everyone to continue to push to make sure their school districts are using the American Rescue Funds to make sure that the schools have the resources that students need and parents and families don't have to supply as much as they, as, as much as they have been. We also know there's an increase in the number of dollars that, that teachers are pu putting out from their own pockets, taking away from their own families, to try to meet those needs and those gaps that have been exacerbated by the pandemic, from food crisis to housing crisis, healthcare crisis. We know all of that has impacted our, our communities of color, especially um, in and those communities where they have been chronically underserved. So we ask if, that people continue to raise their voices and join with us, organize with us, go to NEA.org to join our movement to make sure that all of our schools are funded so all of our students have what they need and they deserve use their voices and know that there are resources out there. National Education Association President Becky Pringle, thank you so much for being on the program again. 
Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.